Have you heard of blue white screening technique which is used in cloning studies? It's a rapid and convenient method that's used for the detection of recombinant bacteria in vector based molecular cloning experiments. It's based on the principle of alpha complementation, that is, the restoration of activity in a mutant enzyme by another copy of the same enzyme. How does that happen? So, we have a mutant beta galactosidase which has a deleted sequence, and that mutant beta galactosidase activity is being restored or brought back or rescued by a fragment of beta galactosidase in which that same sequence that is the alpha donor peptide is intact. So the host E. coli strains that we use for these experiments contain a mutation which results in their inactive beta galactosidase enzyme and such cells can make a functional beta galactosidase enzyme only if they take up the plasmid vector. And that plasmid vector is going to contain our gene of interest. Now, in the plasmid vector, there is usually a lag Z gene, which has a multiple cloning site. There are many such vectors that are designed, which have lag Z gene. The one I have shown you here can be one example of that can be the PUC18 vector. So in the vector, there is a lag Z sequence within which there is a multiple cloning site. Basically, a site where there are several recognition sequences for restriction endonuclease enzymes. That is enzymes which we use to cut and paste our gene of interest. Now, in this MCS, if we are inserting a foreign DNA, then the alpha complementation cannot occur. That is, we have disrupted the lag Z gene. So now I cannot have alpha complementation. That means I cannot get a functional enzyme. On the other hand, if the foreign DNA, if the gene of interest is not inserted into the vector at that multiple cloning site or it is inserted at a location at some other location, then the lag Z gene is now functional. The lag Z gene will now complement the lag Z deletion mutation that is there in the host E. coli. And now the host E. coli will start producing the functional enzyme. How is this helpful to us? When such cells are grown in a medium containing XGAL and IPTG, we get different colored colonies. So XGAL is the chromogenic substrate. Chromogenic because that is getting converted into a colored compound. It is getting hydrolyzed into a colored compound. So XGAL stands for 5-bromo, 4-chloro, 3-indolyl, beta-D-galactopyranocyte. And IPTG is the inducer, inducer for the lag Z gene. So IPTG stands for isopropyl beta D1 thiogalactopyranocyte. This is an analog of galactose, which is going to induce the expression of the lag Z gene. Now, when you grow the cells in such a medium, it induces the expression, IPTG induces the expression of the lag Z gene. And now you get two different colored colonies. The transformed cells form white colonies because the lag Z gene has been disrupted. So there is no beta galactosidase enzyme. No beta galactosidase enzyme means XGAL cannot be hydrolyzed. And so you're going to get white colored colonies. But if recombination has not taken place, then XGAL is getting hydrolyzed by the functional beta galactosidase enzyme. When XGAL gets hydrolyzed, it forms a blue colored pigment. And that blue colored pigment is going to make the colonies appear blue in color. Remember one thing, IPTG is not a substrate for the beta galactosidase. It is only acting as an inducer. So ultimately what happens at the end of the day, if your recombination has occurred in the correct place, then you get white colored colonies. You can pick these white colonies and continue your further experiments. However, if the recombination has not occurred or if it has occurred at a wrong place, then that gives you blue colored colonies. So this is the simple and very easy method of blue-white screening that is done to identify the recombinants.